everybody, and welcome back to session 36 of this podcast. My name is Brianna, and I am the dire designer and human behind the Little Wolf Knits and this YouTube channel. If you're just finding me, welcome. Stick around. I hope you like it here. And if you're coming back, thanks for coming back. It's good to see you again. It is Tuesday. I'll never check. April 2nd. I should have done that because yesterday was April Fool's Day. Um, and it is, once again, gray and gloomy outside. I feel like I'm going to be saying that for weeks on end. I know this is the way of spring. I'm not a spring fan. I think that's what I'm coming to terms with. If it's going to be cold and gloomy, I think I prefer it to be chilly outside. So at least I'm like inside and cozy. Now I'm just like, it's supposed to be sunny and it's not. So we're trying to make the best of it. We're trying to get cozy, stay dry and stay warm. And I think I've been doing a fairly good job of that because while I don't have any finished objects today, I have been doing a lot of knitting and even a bit of spinning. So if you wanna hear what I've been up to, go grab a cup of something cozy or boozy if that's your thing. Grab your knitting and let's jump in. First, let's start with what I'm wearing because this is something you've seen as a finished object last week. We haven't seen it on and now you get to see it on me. I love this so much. Again, it is my new uniform. I'm looking at my other second half sweatshirt right there, my old uniform in flats or drums and it's orange and it feels like a little more autumnal and this is now springy and this will be my spring uniform. I think I'm just gonna have one for every season, right? This could even be spring, summer, fall, winter, I think might be how it goes for now or I will just build a million of these, an entire wardrobe of my second half sweatshirt. Look at it, it is so fun. This is a colorway from the Serial Collection, which will be dropping mid-April if you stuck around last week in last week's session to hear all about it. You will have heard about this. This is a colorway inspired by Cinnamon Toast Crunch, and I believe I'm calling this one Crazy Squares. And this is the coordinating tonal on my 420 base. This is Cinnamon Sugar. This Crazy Squares is on my schooner base. I made a size that has about 10 inches of positive ease, and I don't know why. I guess because when I wear store-bought sweaters, I wear something underneath it. I never wear anything underneath. When I have a knitted sweater, I don't wear things underneath them. But since this has more of that sweatshirt feel, I actually always wear something underneath it, which also makes it feel less gross because I wear it two or three times a week. So. I feel like it doesn't get as dirty this way. I don't know if that's true or I'm just telling myself that, but that's what I'm wearing, staying so cozy. Let's talk a little bit maybe about some administrative updates, things that are coming up, things that I'm really excited about, and then we'll jump into the rest of the episode. Cozy Peaks and Cheeks Mal 2024 has come to an end. It has been so much fun. We wrapped on Sunday, March 31st, and I actually need to pull Instagram winners still um, for the last little bit of this Mal here. It has been really, really fun to see everybody casting on, working on, and finishing a bunch of garments this winter, keeping us cozy, getting ready for spring. And I hope that you have had some fun and maybe found some inspiration from this Mal. If you didn't, or you're just joining us, check out the hashtag on Instagram and give it a scroll because there have been some really fun things that people have been doing. I've seen a lot of second half sweatshirts, a lot of second half sweatpants, a lot of D Street sweaters, which has been really fun. A bunch of cable, central lap cabled crops from my testers and people just casting on since the release last week. So that has been really cool, but it has come to an end. And for now, 
we're going to put the Cozy Peaks and Cheeks Mail back into the filing cabinet for hibernation. Don't worry, there will be more mouths coming soon. And I think if you are getting excited for sun and warm weather, you're really, really gonna like this next one. So make sure you stay tuned here on YouTube and also on my Instagram at Little Wolf Knits to find out all of those details. Other things that are going on, um, like I said, Cereal Box Collection will be releasing mid-April, and I am so excited to announce that I will be at at least one, I will have at least one trunk show during the New Jersey Bull Walk where I will be bringing all of the Cereal Collection colorways, plus a few other fun colorways, sock links, a little bit of fiber, things like that. And I hope to see some of you there. I know I've been getting DMs and emails asking if I was going to be at any of the shops. And to be honest, I hadn't planned that far ahead, but I was able to pull some things together and I am excited to see, say, I'm excited to see, I also am excited to see all of you, but I'm excited to say that I will be at at least one shop it has officially been announced. I will be at Grace and Pearl in Avon by the Sea on Thursday, April 18th. I believe from 11 to 4 are the hours. But again, stay posted on my Instagram. Give them a follow on Instagram if you're not following them already. And I am super excited to be there and see some of you. There's also a very high likelihood that I will be doing another trunk show at a different store on Saturday of that week of New Jersey Will Walk on Saturday, April 20th. Nothing has officially been released yet, so I will not share all of the details, but keep your eye out for more information on that one. I know a lot more people can go to an event on a Saturday if you're not working, um, if you weren't able to take off for the entirety of the wool walk, like I know some people have done, Saturday might be a better option and be a little bit more accessible to you. But I'm so excited for both of those things. I think those are all the updates that I'm going to share here for now. And then I'll share a little bit of what's coming to the shop or what is in the shop a little bit later. I already said I don't have any finished objects. But that's okay. I was feeling pretty bummed about it. I was feeling pretty sad. And then I was talking to my friend Wendy at Very Warm Stripes. Was that earlier today or yesterday afternoon? And she was like, saw my work in progress and was like, did you do all of that in less than a week? And I was like, wow, I guess I did. So I've done a lot of knitting. I just haven't finished anything. And part of that is because I've been knitting on all of the things and spinning on all of the things. So let's just skip ahead past our finished object section and talk about what I've been working on. <music> Whip number one is in my bag from Songbird Handmade. Y'all know I love this bag so much. And Michael has also complimented me on it, which has been really fun. He usually doesn't say things about my bags, but I guess he saw it was new and he was like, I like that bag. I like that fabric. So that was fun. In here, I have a whip that you've seen already, but it looks quite different than the last time you saw it. And right now I actually don't even have my yarn attached. This is, again, another yarn from the cereal collection that I am calling Michael Likes It, and it is inspired by Life Cereal, my personal favorite cereal, I will say. And this is on my laser base, and it's not attached right now because I am actually working on the edging. I'm working on the edging. Last time I showed this to y'all, see that cake down there? That's what I had done. So since then, I have done I think I ended up doing 10 inches of the body here. 10 inches of the body, the entire front panel, shaping for the front, 
and the entire back panel shaping for the back. And yesterday I worked the super fun neckband and it is a super easy, beautiful finishing technique. I love the look of it and I love the look of it on the arms because it almost, it's really seamless. I like that it's flat so it's not like round like an I-cord edge is, which I like for certain things, but I really like this. And I like how it almost looks um, like you rolled up the sleeve. Let me show you on my original sample. First, let me say, this is my low tide tee by me and testers have been chosen from the Wolfpack, sorry. Um, but it should be coming out potentially in May and I'm really, really, really excited about it. But let me grab the original sample because it's right over here. And this one you can see has the ties in at the bottom. One is tied and one has come untied. Um, this does not have the ties in yet, honestly. I was, since I added length, I wanted to make sure I had enough yarn to do all of the top, thinking I could always use a contrasting color for the ties, which could be really fun if I need to, and I don't have enough yarn, but I think I will be okay. But if you see here, this one's a little more relaxed because it is blocked out, but look at this edging on the sleeve. It doesn't it kind of have that look of like when you have a t-shirt and you roll up the edge of it? I don't know. I really like it. I love the finish look. I love the wear. The process of adding this trim is really fun. Although it does require me to look at what I'm doing because similar to a, you know, a typical I-cord bind off, you're decreasing the last stitch and the next stitch to, to keep moving the I-cord along. So I have to look at what I'm doing. So I actually didn't work on this at all today. Otherwise, at least one of these would have been done. But my goal is to pick up for one of these and start working on this once I'm done with this video, which is partly why I was like, oh, I gotta record, but I just wanna knit. You ever have those days? You have to do the things, but you just want in it. Um, that is what it has looked like around here. But yeah, super excited about that. Super excited about the colorway and how it's fitting. And I'm going to love it so much with my tan pants that I was imagining wearing this with. And it is like the perfect summery spring outfit. So sleeve trims will be picked up. I'm going to move my progress keeper for where I started working, but also for when I have shown y'all this, which is this chocolate cake. I'll show you my progress keepers on here. They're like my favorite desserts. So I have this, It's I keep saying chocolate cake. It's not chocolate cake. Clearly it's yellow cake with chocolate icing, which is my favorite. Um, from Sweet Cherry Jewelry Co. And then my donut seashell can you see it is a chocolate frosted donut with a little seashell on top that's like a signature little wolf knits progress keeper I have those in the shop I'm not sure if I have any left that are available you can check um, and shop by charms and progress keepers accessories in my shop and see if there are any if you like that but really really excited about this one and I cannot wait because it will definitely be an FO by next week. And then I'm going to take um, FO pictures of this one quickly because I know I'm going to want to wear both of these. I think this is going to be my new like classic t-shirt, like my staple wardrobe. I'm going to replace all of my classic t-shirts with this low tide tee because it's such, so such a good fit, such a good look. 
And my cinnamon sugar one is a little bit more cropped. Again, I added length to this one, but even making one longer, like full length, two neck length, not two neck length, you know what I mean? Longer full length would be super cute. So it's not done yet. I'm gonna put it back in my lit bag and leave it right here because I will be working on this very soon, AKA as soon as I stop recording. Oh man, I thought I had chapstick in here. My lips are so chapped. Um, that's okay. I'm dehydrated. I haven't been drinking a lot of water. If you have any liquids near you, please drink them. Drink your water. Stay hydrated. Don't be like me. Okay, whip number two, you have not seen yet, because I just cast it on today, while I needed some mindless knitting that I didn't need to look at, and I knew that my low tide T trim was not going to cut it. So instead, I pulled out my horse feather, I'm like, where's the tag? My horse feather fiber arts, I love this bag so much, little cow print sock sack, it is the perfect size. It has this handle. I love the fabric. I love the drawstrings. Also, it smells like my sage and blackberry tuft woolens bar because I always keep it in here. And I have very fond memories of that. I've talked about it before on here. But in it, you will find a new whip. My plan was I had a bunch of leftovers from, these are actually from wedding socks I made for Michael. And this is from um, this is ginger cookies on sunfish that were leftovers from my escort that I had made. And I had Michael look at all my leftovers and pull out some colors that he liked. And he liked these colors. They're not necessarily colors I would be putting together, a black and then ginger cookies, but he liked them. So we'll give the man what he likes. And he wanted a pair of socks. So I was like, let me cast on a toe and have yarn prepped and ready for movie knitting tonight because it's Tuesday, we're going to the movies later and I got a little ahead of myself, ended up knitting a few inches on this sock, but that's okay. I am just going to leave this where it is and then I have a second sock needle here. This is a Chiagu Red Lace. I use a US1, which is a 2.25 millimeter for my socks, Magic Loop. And I'm going to start and finish prep a second toe for this pair so I have a few more inches of straight knitting for the movies tonight. This is, because this is leftovers, I have about 45 or so grams. What I like to do is do my socks toe up so that I use as much of the yarn as I can without running out and without having any more leftover. And... I like working them two at a time, but I actually find it really fussy to have two socks on the same needle. I've done it. I, I think it really does end up taking me longer because of the extra fuss factor and I'm less excited to pick it up and go around and around and around mindlessly. So what I like to do is do them in tandem. So I will have them working at the same time in two different needles, on two different needles, same needle size, but just have two of them I will do section by section. So I'll do the foot to the gusset, foot to the gusset, 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 heel turn, heel turn. And then when I get to the leg, I'll see how much yarn I have left and I'll do a chunk of the leg, chunk of the leg. Then sometimes I get to the point where I'm like, 10 rows, 10 rows, five rows, five rows, two rows, two rows, back and forth, back and forth until my yarn is perfectly even. Sometimes I end up splitting the yarn in half once I get down to the end of this. I just work both ends of the ball and find it easy enough to go until I have no more yarn. So that is the plan. I threw my chocolate chip cookie stitch marker on there. Super cute. Um, I believe I have these in the shop still listed. I think it's my favorite progress keeper I've ever made. I don't know if you can see the detail on here, but it's so good. And yes, because now I know someone will ask. My manicure is chipping, it's a little old, so don't judge me. But this is OPI, OU, Sing, Act, Dance, and Produce. I might have mixed up the order of those, but that is the colorway. If you Google that, I'm sure you will find it. But 
That is whip number two. I'm actually, I know I said I was gonna pick up that trim, but I'm gonna do toe first, and then I will work on the trim until we head out to dinner and then our movie. So that is the second whip. I'm super excited about that. And that'll be, you know, no deadline on that. That'll just be my mindless knitting for the time being. Um, yeah, and it'll get done when it gets done. I do have one more whip, but it's not a knitting whip. It's a spinning whip, and I'm so obsessed. I don't know why I do this with, with spinning in particular. I know I do this with lots of things, like this low tie D. I didn't pick up the trim, so I didn't work on it today. When I get to a part where I have to do some thinking or intentionality, sometimes I sit on it for a while because I'm like, ah. And I know I am more productive. I get more done when I just start the thing. Start it. And then even if I'm not going to work on it, if I had picked up those stitches, I would have worked on it today and it would have been super simple. And that's what was happening with my spinning. I had finished this bobbin of Arco Iris from Malabrigo. Malabrigo Noob. Oh, to be spun with Hello, with Nest Fiber Hello Sunshine. And then I was like, oh, now I'm just going to do my third ply. And I didn't have my bobbin on my wheel. I didn't have my lead on. I didn't start it. I prepped the braid, which I thought would help. But I didn't start it, so it sat here for a week and I didn't touch it. Yesterday, I decided to touch it because Andrew Mowry started another 100 day challenge, a spinning challenge, knitting challenge, she has a few, but she started a 100 day challenge and it is 100 days of long draw, which is what I have been practicing with my spinning throughout the last several months of me learning to spin. So I was so excited, it gave me the kick in the butt that I needed to get going. It was 10 o'clock at night. I was like, I didn't get around to spinning yet. I'm just going to set it up and get started. And I'll just spin for 15 minutes. And I ended up spinning for an hour and a half. But I'm so excited because I'll show you a little bit of the braid. So I took a four ounce oh, and I spun it into, I sorry, spun it. I broke it into four sections lengthwise. So these are each, I believe, about one ounce. Seems like too much. But I guess it's a, a thinner thickness, which I really like when I'm spinning, especially long draw. I don't love like long drawing across a giant braid. So this is beautiful. And this is Malabrigo Noob in Diana. And I spun up one of those strips already in two days, yesterday and today. So I'm like, at this rate, this braid will be spun by the weekend. And then I could ply it this weekend and still get my 15 minutes in of spinning. So I'm very excited. I'm very excited for this challenge. Thank you, Andrew Mowry. She will never watch this video, but oh my gosh, could you imagine? But thank you to Andrew Mowry for helping me get my butt in gear because I have a whole pile of fiber over there waiting for me to spin. And this is certainly the way to do it. So there you go. There is my bobbin. Isn't it so interesting how different things look? Like this is so vibrant. But I think what I'm learning is I'm learning about color theory, right? I know color theory, I'm a dyer. But here we have some complementary colors. We have this pinky magenta and then this tealy green, which are secondary colors, but they're complements. And then we have some like chartreuse pop, some other colors in there. And it looks very bright when it's on that braid. But once you spin it and everything mixes together a little bit, it gets more muted. Let me see. It gets more muted and it's beautiful, purpley, peachy pinks. So much. I'm not sure, honestly, what these three things applied together are gonna look like. I know when I picked them out, I was like, these are really bright. I don't know how this is gonna go, but I think they're gonna tone each other down. Now, looking at them, I'm like, oh, these are definitely gonna tone each other down. I hope it doesn't get too muddy. 
honestly, because I'm like playing with um, a green, a blue, and a pink, a chartreuse, a teal, and a magenta, which is sort of playing with a, a primary colors, right? Yellow, blue, red, different um, variants of those hues. I think they're the right words. Um, so we'll see if it's just gonna make like a brown gross mess or a beautiful muted like dual tone situation. Yeah, I'm really excited to see. It is all an experiment. I think I'm gonna love it no matter what. And if I don't, I'll do something with it. We're all just learning here and it's been fun so far. So I cannot wait to continue learning and seeing how my spinning journey goes. Those are all of the things I've worked on. It's only three things. It doesn't feel like a lot, but I have done a lot of work on most of them. So maybe let's talk for a really quick second about project plans, what's coming next, because this whip is gonna be done soon. This whip is just a, you know, no pressure, no rush to finish, and that braid could potentially be done this week and applied. So let's talk a little bit about what's coming next. All right, some of these you've seen before, some of these you haven't seen, but things I really want to focus on as I finish the whips that I just talked to y'all about. One of them, hmm. One of them is the rest of this braid. Again, I've done the thing where I haven't started it, I didn't get it going, and now it's taking me a really long time to get back on track. And there's not so much fiber here. This could have been done, this could be done in a day. Honestly, this could be done in a few hours. It will take longer, but it took about an hour to spin this much on my wheel. So doing this on my bobbin could definitely be done within a week. I just need to do it. And this is a braid from Melanated Boho Bay. It is a fall one of a kind merino. I don't remember if it's superwash merino. Honestly, I'll have to go back and check. Oh, it's not, it's right here. It is not superwash merino. But I have the rest of this spun and on bobbins waiting to be fractal plied and then made into something really beautiful. Honestly, I kind of want to make a hat like a I'm thinking something like a Harlow hat as one color brioche, single color brioche in fractal. Imagine just like the fate of that. I don't know. I need to see the weight of it. I think it should be a finger and weight yarn. Um, so I could do that. I could also do potentially um, a muscle burr if I use a little batik or some other sort of hat. I think the hat will be the way to go for this. It will be a light fingering, I believe. So I'm not sure that shawl or cowl are the ways I wanna go. But this is definitely going to be something I pick up as soon as this braid is finished. Honestly, when I finish this braid, and then I need to let the singles rest before I apply them. This is what I'm going to pick up that night. I'm not going to spin anything else then until this is done and that is applied. So that is project plan number one, which you've seen, but you haven't seen in a long time. And I wanna get that done because then I really wanna give myself permission to cast on my next, I guess it's not called cast on, to start my next spin on my wheel Yes, on my wheel. I was like, should I do this on a bobbin? Spindle? But I haven't been, been spindle plying as much. Okay, I don't know where I'm going to be working on this. But this is a Vintage Monsters plying pair from Green Goat Ranch. And you've seen this before, but this is the Mummy plying pair. And it is so much fun. Um, so this is Tweed Wool. I don't know if you can see the little tweedy bits in there. I'm super excited to spin with this. 
And then this is Rambouillet, which you know I love. Now that I've used it, I know how much I love it. And the plan is to spin this and then spin this and apply them together. I think I, I don't know how I'm going to divide this, if I'm just going to do it in half. Yeah, probably just in half, right? Let's see. Yeah, probably just in half. And then, uh oh, what did I do? Um, and then, like I said, apply it with the white. But I really like that. And I think that would be very pretty too for a cow, for a hat. We will see what it becomes. I really don't want to combo spin it because I like the idea of this plying pair. And perhaps it'll become a hat for Michael. Although I have a feeling he's going to say, I already have a hat that color. But he doesn't. He has an orange and red hat. And if he finds out, when he finds out, this is the mummy. I think he might like this. So we'll see. But that will be next on my wheel once I'm done with this spin and that bobbin. And then in the knitting realm, once I'm done with the slow tie tee, I'm going to cast on a new design. The next design, you've already seen this in a, a previous project planning segment, I think in the beginning of, at some point in March when I like got really excited and, and was getting, feeling springy and like all of these new things were happening. This is in my beautiful sister cactus bag, which I love. But now you know, this is my Fruit Loops inspired colorway. So it's called Follow Your Nose. And it's gonna be a really fun summery tank. So I have a little lobster claw on there and a banana on there because I thought they were adorable. And that is going to get cast on as soon as my low tide tea is done because the numbers and math are already done for this one. So it is sitting here waiting for me to start it. So those are project plans. Let's talk really quickly about things that have popped into the shop since the last time we chatted that you wanna make sure you don't miss out on. Michael is pulling into the driveway, which means he'll be coming in soon. Maybe he can tell us about his favorite colorway of this month, but our April colorway clubs, our April clubs, our April clubs, our colorways for April. Our April clubs are now in the shop. We have another installment in another month of our From the Open Road Travel Inspired Club. And this one is Zion National Park, and I love it. I have the, the photo for this was this picture, the mountains in the different distance, and it's like these reddish mountains, cliffs, and then all of this greenery, and then this really steel blue creek in the foreground, and it was such a peaceful and wild day being in Zion. Um, actually, when we took that picture, we saw a rock slide an avalanche a rock slide and someone was pretty badly injured on the trail that we were on I feel like I've talked about this before um so this is a one that's close to my heart but I really like this colorway again I still think it's really moody and earthy but this green is pretty vibrant and green to me feels very like springy and new life so I I'm hoping that y'all enjoy Zion National Park as one club option. And then since we are heading into quarter two of this year, we are heading out of Gilmore Girl season and into a new fandom, which I have never done in the shop before and I am so, so excited about. Quarter two will be all things Ted Lasso and we are starting off with a bang 
super obviously Ted Lasso. And this month's colorway is called Believe. If you have seen the show, you'll know exactly what this is. And even if you haven't seen the show, you've probably seen images of this sign. That's a yellow sign with blue lettering on a blue painted wall. And the image I took was the entire team reaching out and touching the sign. They were all in their gray um, zip ups. And this is the colorway we came up with. This bright yellow, this gray, and then all of the pops of that royal blue. I just think it's so perfect. And like also really bright and summery and would be perfect for socks or a top or shorts. I was thinking this one would be super cute for shorts. And of course, you know the mini is going to be a bright, a bright royal blue, um, something akin to Handsome Dan, um, if you look up the tonal in my shop. And I think that would be a perfect contrasting color for this for the pair of shorts that I'm imagining or a twisted t-shirt with the blue contrast. Um, I think it would be super fun. So this is also in the shop. So we have Believe, which is a Ted Lasso colorway or Zion National Park. And once again, they could not be more different from each other, but that's what we like. There's Michael. Variety for all of the folks who like all the different things. So these are both in the shop. We also have our Moana. July countdown boxes, we have 30, 15, or single day boxes, and the 30 and 15 can be purchased in our Sunfish base or a 420 base. Single day option can be on any base in any quantity that you would like. You can also buy more quantities of the 13, the 15 and 30 day <laughs> options if you'd like, multiple countdowns. Um, but I'm really excited. They're still in the shop and this is the last month that they will be in the shop before they get pulled down to be dyed. So if you're wanting one, make sure you get in on one. And the cool thing, just a reminder for any orders in my shop above $50, you could use shop pay installments, which means at no cost to you and no interest, you can break down your payment of that order into four payments. I think it's every two weeks. So I know that countdowns, whether 15 days or 30 days are a big investment. Hopefully that makes it a little bit more accessible for folks to grab and gift to themselves or have someone else gift to you uh, for the month of July. So those are all in the shop. Both clubs, Moana Club, our pearlescent and desert bloom cloudscape sweater scarves are still in the shop. Again, we're caught up with dyeing. So I did some dyeing yesterday. All orders for those kits have been dyed. They're now just waiting to dry. And then they will go out by the end of this week in time for the release, which is this Friday, April 5th for both the knitted and the crochet cloudscape, cloudscape sweater scarf. And I'm so excited that you're loving both of those colorways. I'm loving dyeing them up. And I can't wait to see all of the cloudscape twins out in the world matching each other. Um, I honestly want to make both of them. So that might happen sometime soon. Um, the last thing, I feel like there was one more thing I wanted to say. I guess I won't announce details yet. There is another exciting surprise that will be dropping during this month. Um, probably the middle end of this month. Honestly, there's just a lot of prep going on in the next few weeks. Um, but my October box slash countdown will be going live this month. And I think you are really going to like this one. Um, the most exciting part about this is before I, well, how do I say this? Um, I had decided on this club and this theme last year and then once i decided it i was talking to my friend natalie of nitty natty and her husband kent and they were like oh do you know a second movie is coming out so spoiler alert it's movie all of my most of my october clubs have been um have they i think i did coco first and then the rest have been tim burton so it is a Tim Burton movie and there is a sequel, a second movie coming this year, which feels like perfect timing for this box. 
I have spoiled it enough. If you're a true fan, you probably already know what I am talking about and you're probably already screaming its name at me. Don't say it three times. <laughs> I was like, Michael, are you gonna say it? Don't say it three times. Um, but I will stop talking about it. And keep your eye out because that's coming soon. I am super, super excited to see what you all think of it. I think that is all of the things that are in the shop for now that I will talk about. So let's just talk for a little bit about life stuff. I'll just sit down and sit down. That's what that would be. That's okay. People like seeing you. Okay, go away then from here. Michael, if you're in, it's so cold. Are you gonna be excited about this or not? I'm excited. I just don't have anything going on that's exciting for me. Okay, anyway, talking about life stuff, last week, I think I recorded this on Wednesday because we talked about our movie on Tuesday. Since then, Michael and I have finished Game of Thrones. No, you don't make any comments because you don't want to be here for this. We have finished Game of Thrones, the entire series. We started it at the beginning of this year in January, and we have watched all eight series. It feels like a lot, but also I think in my head I was like, we'll watch one season a week, and then we'll be done in February. So I'm like, we took a long time watching this, but I recognize we watched a lot of TV in a short amount of time. And we took almost no time to wait to start House of the Dragon. The ho House of the Dragon? House of Dragon? House of the Dragon, I think. Whatever that show is called. And we only watched, no, 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 yesterday when I was like, I'm just going to do 15 minutes of spinning. We had about 15, 20 minutes of an episode left. Maybe we had 10 minutes left. And I was like, let's just finish that episode and I will spin during that time and then I'll stop. And then we accidentally watched an entire net, an, another episode. So we watched the second episode, started the third episode. I was like, Michael, it is almost midnight. We need to go to bed. So safe to say we're liking it so far. There's only one season, but I think the second season is coming out this summer. So very excited for that. We are also going to see another movie tonight oh what's it called i believe it is called late night with the devil late night with the devil it is a scary movie that which is why i need mindless knitting so i'm going to cast on that second toe and then have that to work on um i'm curious i don't know too much about it we're really excited about movies that are coming out in the next week or two Monkey Man is coming out. The First Omen is coming out. So we will definitely be watching lots of movies very soon. But we'll see that tonight. And yeah, that's what we have planned. I've also been doing a bit of reading. I finished All the Missing Girls by Megan Miranda. I liked it. It was not my favorite Megan Miranda book. Although I just really liked the first book I read. So, you know, sometimes you see or read something by an author or an artist and that first thing is like, oh, you can never match it. I wonder if I have a little bit of that happening with her books. I really liked it. I liked how this one, again, played with time and worked backwards um, for a lot of it, which was really fun. And I think her books do a cool thing where there's the main twist, but then there's another plot mystery, smaller twist coming. And they're usually related but separate. And... I think I'm getting better because I s kind of anticipated one of them, but not really, not, not the other one. So uh, I don't know. I liked it a lot. And now I am reading, um, with the book club, the turn of the key. I was like, what's it called? Turn of the key. I'm about 25% through. It is a slow burn like slow, I'm enjoying it. I'm reading it in chunks, so I read a little bit at night and I'm enjoying it and I'm curious where it's going to go. I know some people who loved this book so much. Um, I just, my one friend who's reading this for a book club let me know she finished it and she hated the ending. 
So I'm very curious what that means or what that's going to look like. So yeah, I'm kind of just curious to keep reading and see what I think. It's my first Ruth Ware book. I have not read anything by Ruth Ware, but I've heard really good things. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see where that goes. And that is, I think, all that I have to talk about and all that I could think of as far as life stuff. I feel like my life is just yarn and knitting and therapy and assessment and watching things and reading things, which honestly sounds kind of wonderful. And I hope your life is full of all of the things this week that you want to do, the things that fill you up and you get a lot of making done and you get a lot of movies watched or TV watched or books read or whatever you want to do. And I will check in with you next week, hopefully with a lot more making done. Okay. Take care of each other. Talk to you then. Bye.